Throughout Lewis and Clark's journey, the Corps of Discovery encountered many Native American tribes. Amongst the most important tribes to the expedition were the Mandan. The Mandans lay al among the Missouri River, where is now North Dakota. This location was a trade hotspot and they had seen many different ethnicities, so the Indians were not troubled by the arrival of, the, of a new race. The Mandans lived among two villages, the Matutana and the Rupati. The Matutana inhabited the western bank of the Missouri River. Directly north of them, the Rupati a village was located on the eastern bank. This is where the Corpse of Discovery built Fort Mandan during the winter of 1804. Throughout their stay, the crew and the Mandans were very friendly to one another. If, a ma if the Indians eat, the Americans eat. If the Indians starved, the Americans starved. The Mandan supplied the corpse with food while receiving trade goods in return. When the food ran low, the crew joined the Indians on a buffalo on buffalo hunts. Lewis had an interesting uh, perception of the Mandans in his quote, "A great majority of the inhabitants are miserably poor, illiterate, and when at home, excessively lazy. Though they are polite, hospitable, and by no means deficient in a point of natural genius. A neighboring tribe, the Hiratsas, also had a key role in the success of the voyage. There, Lewis and Clark hired a French-Canadian interpreter named Toussaint Charbonneau, knowing that he would bring along his pregnant wife, Sacachouia. These two both played a vital role in the excursion. Without the help of the Mandan and other Indian tribes, the expedition would not have been able to be successful in their journey. On Lewis and Clark's expedition, they encountered many animals, such as bison, groundhogs, and grizzly bears. When they saw a bear, it was on a sandy beach and was very hard to kill. It took ten shots with five bullets through the head, from Clark and another member of the crew named Geo Dreyer before they could su subdue the 500 to 600 pound animal. They say that the animal was the largest of the carnivorous kind I ever saw, measuring eight feet, seven and a half inches, from the nose to the extremity of the toe, from Clark. They divided up all the parts of the grizzly bear between the crew. As well as killing a bear that day, they also killed three elk and a buffalo for food. Many supplies were needed during the expedition, such as 25 hatchets. They had many medicines that they brought with them from a famous doctor in Philadelphia named Dr. Benjamin Rush. He was famous because he signed the Declaration of Independence as a delegate in 1776 and was instrumental in stopping yellow fever in Philadelphia in 1793. He gave them a lot of med medical resources to be able to survive in the wild without getting too sick. Among the supplies, he gave them thunderclappers. Thunderclappers were pills that were made and patented by Dr. Rush as means of purging the system. They were given 50 dozen of the pills that eliminated gas in the stomach. They also brought presents for the Native Americans who they encountered, such as ivory and jewelry. But they also brought 10 pounds of sewing thread, 20 pounds of beads, and 4,600 sewing needles. Many wondered how none of the Indians decided to attack the expedition. One theory is because the explorers had an air rifle, and they were scared of it. The rifle was better than the gunpowder rifles, because all you had to do to reload was press a button and it was loaded. Because, uh, because of this, they could shoot many more rounds than the gunpowder rifles in the same time period. One downside to the air rifle, however, was it could only be fired 40 times, or two loads of balls, before the speed of the bullets began to slow.